Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the RealWorks virtual job fair event. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Eddie. He's going to tell you a little bit about their company, um, the job openings they have, and how you can apply for that. So I will pass it off to you, Eddie. Thanks, Ariel. Hello, everyone. This is Eddie Barrera. I work for RealWorks Corporation. I'm a recruiter. I've been here a little over two years. I'll go ahead and get started um, with sharing a, a video and then explaining a little bit more about the video. One second. Ariel, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, and we can hear it too, it sounds. Perfect. Okay, so I'll, I'll continue to share my screen. Um, I What I just did now is logged on to our uh, career webpage, which can easily be found at jobs.railworks.com. Um, and I'll kind of kind of walk through a couple of um, reasons why Railworks is really an employer of choice. Um, so first off, we have a great company culture. Um, as far as our leadership goes, we have a very strong leadership in terms of years of experience. Our guys are at the top um, who have made their way through the ranks, including starting off as a laborer. So it's really exciting to um, understand and realize that your, your work and your work ethic is uh, recognized and rewarded. Um, so what differentiates us from our competitors is that we're a really big contractor that services a lot of different areas of the railroad industry, including um, thermite welding, electric welding, um, track maintenance, track rehab, uh, constructing new track, signals and communication. Um, we do undercutting as well. We do a lot of surfacing of, uh, of the rail as well. Um, in terms of our customers, as you may have noticed on the video, we we uh, complete work for anyone from class one railroad, freight, uh, heavy rail, light rail. So basically um, the train tracks that are necessary to get goods, material, and people across the U.S. and Canada, we're, we're able to, um, to work with those guys and also um, complete our work safely. And we're real, real uh, proud to, to really boast about and brag about our, our safety record and brag about um, the opportunities to really make this a career. So for our entry level position, which we're typically hiring throughout the year, it's called uh, a track laborer, which is basically a general laborer, um, but in the railroad construction industry. And the day-to-day -day for a general laborer, as you may have seen in the video, it's very physical, it's outdoors. Um, it's a lot of swinging sledgehammers, a lot of using hand tools, power tools. Um, and then there's also the opportunity, again, to to make your way up within the company and 
learn how to operate equipment, learn how to weld, learn how to drive, get a CDL. So there's a lot of opportunities that stem from what's called a track laborer, which is your entry level position. Our guys and gals uh, who work for us de definitely um, travel a lot. So that's another um, thing that I, I do want to, uh, or item that I do want to discuss uh, before I talk to or really get into uh, engaging a candidate about our, our work is that railroading in general does require an extensive amount of travel in terms of um, being out of town for one to three weeks at a time, uh, sometimes even longer, especially um, during the, the winter months when work tends to slow down in the Midwest and Northeast regions. Uh, we are a very big contractor, so we have offices in Texas, Florida, California, and so we keep our guys and gals busy um, by sending them down south for a month or two while the, the winter months, the harsh months of the winter, um, pass and then we'll bring it back up to Midwest and at that point it'll be a rotation of two to three weeks working on and then coming back home for a week while you're out of town we'll take care of um, we'll compensate travel time we'll compensate uh, via per diem for food and toiletries we'll compensate and pay for the, um, the room and we'll take care of getting you out of town so you'll meet up with um, a crew member or a foreman and then you guys would uh, travel out of town together in a, a company vehicle and then once your three-week rotation is up you'll come back and rest for a week and you'll continue to do that throughout the year um, in terms of what else separates us from competitors and other companies is we have a really strong benefits package including medical dental vision and a 401k with a three and a half employer match or up to three and a half employer match based on employee contributions we have multiple plans to choose from for health um, and also multiple plans to choose from for dental. We just have one plan for, uh, for vision. Um, it, it's a unique opportunity, again, for someone that is willing to travel, someone that has a strong work ethic, someone that's disciplined, um, someone that's willing to get their hands dirty, but also someone that's serious about their career. Um, you really get out of it what you put in. Um, so if you, uh, if you put in discipline and a hard work ethic, uh, month after month, you'll start to see that you're, you're being recognized in terms of more hours, you're being rewarded in terms of better pay, you're being recognized in terms of you're, you're getting your choice of how, how, uh, how long you get to stay out of town, or you're getting your choice or your, your preferences heard in terms of how close you want to stay to home. Uh, they don't do that for everybody. They do that for the hard workers and the people that really deserve that um, and the people that they want to keep happy. So with that said, I'm going to go back to the screen I was just on. Ariel, can you see this screen? Yep. Okay. So once anyone goes to this screen, you'll, you'll see um, there's jobs under professional, under operations, under skilled craft. Um, I'm mainly focused on recruiting for skilled craft, including laborers, equipment operators, welders, mechanics, um, uh, a more specific uh, operator, which, which is called a tamper operator or a rail um, grinder, or not a rail grinder, um, tamper or a rail regulator operator. Um, and then in terms of the, the type of equipment we use and utilize, it's mostly, as you see in the picture above skilled craft, it's mostly um, excavators and or backhoes, um, which is a variation of an excavator, smaller. Uh, excavator and we use instead of your regular bucket on on the end of the boom of the excavator or the backhoe we use a cribbing bucket which basically gives us um, the opportunity to grab the, the cross tie from under the rail grab it with the, the cribbing bucket like a claw grab it remove it and then replace it our op our um, operators are in the seat for about 10 percent out 10 percent out of the day and they're really um, doing a lot of uh, groundwork, physical labor for the rest of the day. Um, there's a lot of prep that goes into railroad maintenance and construction in terms of planning, scoping the job out, um, understanding what your responsibilities are, understanding uh, what tools are necessary, what materials necessary to be out there, understanding um, you know when to really take a break because it is very physical work and you gotta know your own limits. Um, and then definitely safety is the top priority again. Um, so really 
taking all of that into consideration and knowing that it's a long day, it's a 10 hour day. So you're, you're not expected to complete all your work in two or three hours. Um, so really pace yourself, uh, understand that there's always work that can be done. Um, so you, you won't ever feel like you're bored or don't have anything to do. Uh, there's a lot of shovel work. There's a lot of, you know, sledgehammer work. Um, and then also realize that although a lot of times we start people off as a laborer, this is going to be their opportunity to really um, take their career in their hands and understand uh, where they want to go with it and ask questions and really pick the, the mind of a foreman or pick the mind of a welder or an operator and ask them, hey, how did you get to, to where you're at? Uh, what, what recommendations or suggestions do you have for me at my level? What do you think I can learn? What do you think I can do better? What are some tips uh, that you can give me to work more safer? And you will start to see as you ask those questions, you'll get a different perspective from so many different people in the industry that you're, you're really making yourself more well-rounded. You're really building your toolbox and getting a stronger foundation of knowledge. Um, so in terms of compensation, which is a, a really key part in a lot of you know the conversations that I have with candidates is what does this position pay? We pay um, the union uh, local rates. And so th those can be found online or speaking with your local union hall. Um, we go through um, labor unions. And so the, the pay is very competitive. It isn't, you know, 15 an hour, you know, 16 an hour. It's above that. Um, the reason I mentioned 15 or 16, because we've but we, we have a, a non-union side and a union side. Our non-union side, um, that, that's the pay rate for a, an entry level person that has no experience depending on their location, city and state and cost of living. Um, but on the union side, they take into account um, union dues, they take into account um, other items related to what we have to abide by um, to, to utilize that union. And also um, projects require us to utilize a lot of unions as well. So again, the compensation is very competitive, benefits are great, culture is great. Uh, the experience and being outdoors is great. Um, but again, we're, we're looking for a, a really disciplined candidate, a really hardworking candidate, and someone that's willing to, to really get their hands dirty. Um, with that said, I'm going to go back to this page, excuse me, uh, and do a search by location. And so what you'll do is click on the right side or the right text box, uh, and type in Chicago and search jobs. And you'll notice that we have uh, multiple jobs from truck operators, uh, boom truck and grapple truck operators to a superintendent role, to a PM role, uh, a welder helper position, a track foreman position, a thermite welder position. And again, track labor is typically something that we're hiring year round. So although you may not see it today, it's gonna be a position that we're recruiting for most likely by the end of the week or early next week. Um, so, that's a little bit about RailWorks. Ariel, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'd like to know where do we want to go from here? Yeah, we can open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and type them into the chat um, and we can get those answered for you. Um, I do want to say first off that um, I'm going to drop this link in the chat. This is the link to the RailWorks um, employer booth on Illinois WorkNet. They've posted their links there, um, how to get to their job posting site, and some other information about um, this employer. So you can go ahead and check that out at a later date. I just wanted to drop that in there for anyone um, who might need it. So um, now moving on, um, we'd like to answer any questions that you might have. So go ahead and type them into the chat now. Um, and we do have a question. Uh, what are the normal shift hours that would be worked in a week? So it'll be most likely Monday through Saturday when they're out of town. They'll have that Sunday off, um, but they're going to be out of town Monday through Saturday, two weeks straight, and they're working anywhere oh, no. between nine and 12 hours every day. And it starts uh, at 6 a.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, are you um, paid for the time that you're being trained for these positions? Yeah, when we are training someone up, um, I mean, because 
we start someone as a track laborer day one, they're, they're learning. And as soon as they start learning, um, or even during orientation, we, we pay for that. We start there, we pay for training, um, and anything thereafter um, as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, how would you recommend, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview, assuming that they're qualified for the position? Um, specifically for the ones that are on this call, uh, what they would wanna do is when they complete an application, uh, list under the referral or how you heard about uh, RailWorks. Um, it's quote unquote source, like how did you hear about us? Um, put that you heard about us through this workforce. Um, the other piece is we usually get a dozen or so applications a day and we'll reach out to everyone that's qualified to begin with, but that stands out if you, if you mention that you heard about us through this. Um, the other thing is whenever a recruiter reaches out to you uh, within that same day or that very next day, you want to make sure to, to respond to at least let them know that you're interested in speaking, even if you're not able to speak that day or the next day. Um, the recruiter, like myself and some of the other recruiters on my team, we're very flexible. So we're able to talk to someone after work, whether it's 5, 6, or 7 p.m. Um, or even before work, and if they want to talk at 7 a.m., we'll, we'll make it work. Um, and in terms of standing out, what they'll want to do, what a candidate would want to do is, okay, they're qualified, but how much do they know about RailWorks already? Um, what, what do they know about us? What, what are they really interested in? Why are they interested in RailWorks? Um, and so put their time into researching the company is what I would recommend to stand out. So um, that, and then also how does their, their skill set? correlate and how is that relevant to what we're looking for. Um, so again, I, I think I mentioned discipline and work ethic maybe like 10 times in this conversation. So what a, I would want a, a candidate to do is if we're talking with them or if we want to reach out to them, that they respond that same day or that very next day and they let me know, hey, I'm available X day and X hour. I'll call them that at that time, but right after the interview, um, I'll either send the resume an application or hold off on sending the resume and application and let the candidate uh, confirm why do they feel they're a good fit for the position. And then I'll send the three items together. Um, and I think that really uh, leads to a better success rate at an interview. If they're able to put in a, a really strong resume, an application that's put together in terms of it's not missing any um, employment dates or employment dates are not overlapping or they just overlooked employment dates altogether. So that, that's something that the manager reviews, the application, the resume, and then lastly, any, any notes from the recruiter and or any feedback from the, from the candidate. Um, those three things would definitely stand out and um, have a better success rate at an interview and then thereafter potentially at, at hiring on with the company. Okay, and then um, we had another question in the chat. Do you pay for the PPE? or is it provided? Um, we provide all PPE with the exception of steel toe boots and that's it. And there, there's a specific type of steel toe boot and I can get into those details when I speak with any candidate, but just for reference, they have to be lace up and eight inches from the heel with the defined uh, heel as well. So th those are pretty easy to find at Academy or Walmart for pretty cheap, um, but only recommendation and everyone that's been in the construction field, they, they know this. You definitely want to break those shoes in before you come out to the field and um, break them in on, on a railroad where there's a lot of, um, I would say, tough areas to walk, especially with the, uh, the ballast and how that's sloped against the, the rail itself. And um, so definitely want to break those in as quick as possible before they start with rail works. And that's the only item that has to be paid for by the, the employee. Okay, um, and then uh, we had another question just asking um, more specifically about the pay. So could you go into any more about that or? Yeah, so on average, a union rate for labor position in Chicago, um, and, it, and it differentiates in different parts of Chicago and even outside of Chicago, such as Indiana, um, you know, because you can get to Indiana pretty quickly. Um, it'll be anywhere from 18 to 21 an hour starting off. And there's multiple levels to what's called the laborer journeyman 
and for every level you move up, there's a, a pay increase of up to, uh, to you know, 10% to 20%. So a laborer level two can easily be at 25 an hour. A laborer level three can easily be at 27 to 30 an hour. And then another question we got was, um, after, after how many days are you entitled for vacation? So that will accrue after a year of being with the company. So for every um, month, basically, or a month and a half, because it's a accrual of one week of vacation for the second year of your employee. So that first week, you're just building up your seniority with the company that first year. And then once you hit, hit uh, 366 days with the company, you start accruing your own vacation, and it will be accrued at one week per year. And so that's five days over 12 months, which is a little over one day every two and a half months. You, you'll accrue one day of vacation for every two and a half months you put in after working with the company for a full year. Um, and then they also asked, what about opportunities for drivers with class A? Um, so we have a lot of opportunities for a driver, including hauling heavy equipment to and from a job site um, on a low boy or uh, stretch trailer or um, step deck. Um, and then we also have opportunity for drivers that have experience with cranes and or boom or grapple trucks. Um, those three different opportunities, the main responsibilities for that person that holds their CDL is um, driving, but there's a really big chunk of secondary responsibility that involves and with every other position as well as well not just drivers but I do want to mention it for our CDL drivers out there is it involves a lot of labor um, so they won't only haul equipment or only use a grapple truck they're expected to haul equipment to a job site and then potentially work on that job site as an operator um, or even a laborer and it just depends on what the need is of the business at that point but the drivers definitely make more money because they are bringing uh, CDL to the table. It's a little bit uh, hard to find and very valuable to all construction industries, especially if they have grapple truck experience or especially if they have uh, equipment uh, hauling experience. And I I'm sure that they probably want to know what the pay is for, for a driver. So it's anywhere from 25 plus, so 25 to 32 an hour. And then um, what uh, safety precautions do you have in place for the COVID pandemic? Yeah, we have a nine step protocol, which includes um, anything from addressing visitors in the office to limiting visitors in the office, taking temperature, social distancing, decals on the floor, um, also max occupancy signage throughout the buildings. Um, we upgraded our, filtration, our, our filter system our HVAC system um, to the recommendations of CDC, which the, it's MERV 13 um, compared to a lot of uh, old filters. Those were like MERV 7 and MERV 8. Um, we also put directional arrows in our offices. Uh, we provided all types of PPE to our field and office employees, including gloves, um, face masks. We require face masks for anyone that visits our office and anyone that's outside of their desk so if they stand up and they walk to a common space or a common area that walk should be with the mask on um, but anyone sitting down at their own desk they, they can take it off while they're working um, we encourage social distancing um, we also mandated all of our offices before we started to allow employees to to, to go back into the office to complete these protocols and have um, our leadership team not only support it, but sign off on it to acknowledge and create responsibility and accountability for that office that, you know, they, they understand uh, the severity and the, um, the seriousness of the safety of our employees. And that's our number one concern. And so uh, I'm proud to say that we, we do have those protocols in place. And that was a great question. Um, and then we had another question. What's your um, monthly or yearly in injury frequency? So that is based on um, project and or location. 
So our Chicago office is actually one of our best uh, offices in terms of injury, uh, near misses, and um, anything related to safety, um, safety occurrences really. And so that, that, that's something that we're happy to say that they're one of the best ones and they have one of the best track records. But it really depends on um, the project specifically to, to determine uh, what the incident rate is throughout the year. All right, well, that's all we have for questions um, in the chat. If you do have any other last minute questions, now would be a good time to put those in the chat. Um, but if there, oh, uh, we had one more question. Um, what about holidays? Um, in terms of compensation or taking them out, I'll, I'll address both parts. Oh, so, oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so a lot of times the railroad does call for our workers to be uh, working during a holiday and we compensate usually double time for that. And um, if we can, we'll try to send our employees home as many home as we can uh, without our customer or our clients. Um, you know, being upset with us that we don't have enough workers to support their projects even during the holiday because they also are working during the holiday. So we'll compensate double for those people that are working the day of the holidays, um, but we'll also give preference to those that don't want to work uh, the days of the holidays. They, they won't be paid for those holidays. Um, they'll be sent home, but, you know, home time is a lot more valuable uh, to some people than others. So we'll give preference to those that want to stay home. We won't ask them to go to the uh, to work those days if we have enough people who are willing to work those days. Um, so there's some flexibility um, in terms of working the holiday, and at least putting your name in the hat to not work the holiday. All right, great, thank you. Um, so I do we we will go ahead and wrap up at this point. Um, if you have any additional questions. Um, Eddie, would you feel comfortable typing your um, information or email into the chat so that if anyone has any additional questions, they could reach out to you or any other way that you would want them to reach out? Um, yes, of course. Okay, great. Um, so again, uh, you can visit their employer booth on Illinois WorkNet. I dropped that link in the chat a little bit earlier. Um, a recording of this webinar today will be posted there later today. Um, so you can review any of this information later as well. And Eddie has sent his email in the chat. So if you have any more specific questions for him, you can go ahead and reach out. Um, I want to thank you all for coming today. I want to thank Eddie for the presentation. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.